Street. So that uh, so you found time to visit. Uh, so this event, this round table, the topic of the round table is Russia and Europe, cooperation instead of confrontation. Today we are going to talk about the processes which uh, take place in the world and especially in the Western Europe about those political trends uh, which deserve great uh, care of our Russian auditorium, political organizations, politicians in Russia. Today we'll present uh, the book of Stanislav Beshkaz, uh, The New Europe of Vladimir Putin, The Lessons of West for Russia. So it tells about the political tendencies in uh, Russia and Europe and uh, so the international uh, movement. So there is a very landmark event. So today is 22nd of June and we uh, have gathered on this particular day. So and you know quite well what does it mean for our country, for our nation, this date, the 22nd of June. And unfortunately, there are such processes when more and more uh, uh, Russians and Europeans start looking at each other as across the frontier line. So there are some processes uh, uh, which look like the Cold War, but we saw that it had been uh, uh, so in the past. But right now, so this uh, tension which is uh, underway in media, that it seems to us that the Cold War is a sort of ironic uh, uh, event uh, because the level of propaganda, propagandistic attacks uh, on our country country, on our leadership, on our nation in Russia looks quite uh, serious. And it has uh, so the extent uh, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, great and the uh, level of uh, Russia phobia is so high that uh, so it can be compared with any propaganda in the 60s and 70s of the previous century. And right now there has been the fight against not the states, uh, the governmental establishment that uh, we can see that someone has uh, declared the war against the nation. And we uh, so, uh, can hear about some negative uh, features which are adjacent. Uh, inherent to the Russian nation for the whole history of our existence, and we wanted to talk about these things. If there are any forces in Europe and who present uh, all these forces, who can uh, contradict all these uh, negative events, we invited our colleagues from Austria, representatives of uh, the Party of Freedom, uh, and the political analyst uh, from France, uh, Pierre Malinovsky, and you know that uh, uh, these are people from uh, so Europe who are friends. Uh, Alexander Yushchenko, so from the state Duma, uh, has been invited because uh, he uh, has been setting so the uh, contacts uh, with the political circles. He visited uh, Dresden conference where he made the co uh, presentation uh, on uh, Russian and European relations. I don't want to to deprive you of extra time. There will be an opportunity to talk. I will give the floor to Stanislav Alegovich. He will tell us in brief about his book, and then we will give the floor to our guests after the presentations and comments of our guests. You will have an opportunity to make some comments, ask questions, and the second part of this event will be sort of a discussion. Thank you very much, Stanislav Alegovich. You're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Alexander Ladovich. Thank you very much, uh, our guests uh, uh, from the Western countries, from the state Duma. Thank you for coming. You know that for the recent years, at least for three, four years, uh, we got used to this collocation. Our Western partners with a sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 irony, um, so with a sort of uh, uh, sneer, so, and we imply 
side that we have very complicated relations with these people. Uh, and we uh, understand that uh, so common people, people uh, who deal with politics, uh, uh, they face questions. Uh, are all of these uh, people in the worst are against us uh, and uh, so all these media in foreign languages uh, in uh, russia so all of them uh, so uh, are against uh, uh, russia as it the fundamental uh, key uh, development of the ideological uh, thinking in the West. Uh, uh, so is everything uh, against us? Are there any alternatives to that? And it's quite natural for me to think about this issue. And a few years ago, my scientific interest and practical interest uh, uh, appear to be so uh, very uh, close to those parts uh, as Eurosceptics, uh, which are called like that. First of all, uh, I understood that these parties used to be nationalistic, patriotic uh, ones, and I didn't understand this name, Eurosceptics. Uh, so because uh, these parties, uh, uh, so they uh, stuck to the traditions of Europe, they should be uh, Europeans. Uh, when I started the ideology, the history uh, of the National Front in France, uh, the Austrian Party of uh, Freedom, the Party of Independence of the United Kingdom, uh, so the Party of the League of the North in Italy, I realized uh, that uh, they are European skepticism or anti-European Euro development uh, is based on uh, so the project uh, uh, so uh, in Belgium, in Brussels, uh, and we can say so these are the forces of anti-nationalistic forces who uh, set up this foundation because they try to really replace uh, so the national identical uh, states, nations uh, with uh, some kind of supernatural entity, a sort of a bureaucratic uh, administration which will uh, sort out the problems of all the nations in Europe. As a result of my studies and research appeared to be the book. And probably most of you received this book. It has been issued recently. The book is called New Europe of Vladimir Putin, The Lessons of the Worst for Russia. This book was released uh, in between uh, the first and the second uh, uh, tours of presidential campaigns in uh, France, and you can see on the cover so the uh, foot of Putin and uh, Mrs. Le Pen. So and. Um in this book, I tell about the uh, history uh, for the key strategic parties in uh, the West, uh, uh, that is interpretation of uh, their positions towards uh, Russia, because uh, that re uh, research I did uh, uh, was interesting. My colleagues from Austria and France uh, will confirm this uh, idea that most uh, uh, politicians and representatives of uh, political parties uh, see um, Russia as an alternative to Europe or another Europe, so because uh, it can, uh, it is different from what they can observe from their uh, window in Europe, because um, most of us uh, saw with a strange uh, nostalgia. So the way the white migrants uh, lived uh, in France and other Western countries, and they told us that was the Russia which we had lost. Nowadays, uh, so the nationalistically uh, thinking people about uh, their identity, so these political parties uh, look at Russia with the same ideas. Uh, Russia is that uh, Europe we are risking to uh, lose. Now, if we uh, take this route of uh, multiculturalism and globalization, which brought us to enormous crisis, migration crisis, uh, and the religious terrorism and the national identity crisis uh, completing so this uh, brief uh, introduction uh, 
I would like to tell you, so in this book, New Europe of Vladimir Putin, uh, the lessons of uh, West for Russia, it looks uh, as a provocative title. Uh, originally, we wanted to call it in another way, but then we decided that it is politically important uh, for many partners without any quotation marks uh, uh, that modern uh, Russia is uh, reviving Russia. It is association, associated with the Vladimir Putin, his policy, because uh, we captured the data, the uh, detail, detailed description of the developments uh, in political parties. There are direct quotes here, uh, and there are the representatives of those parties ideological uh, trends uh, which I described in the book uh, so they came here thank you very much for coming here they present their uh, visions the way we can adjust and maintain relations between the West and Russia uh, whom will we uh, give the floor I think mm, so, uh, I will present you Jochen Godanes, our guest from Austria. He is vice uh, um, mayor in Wien. He is one of the leaders of the young wing of Austrian Party of Freedom. He is uh, a star of the national policy in Austria. I would say like that. I wouldn't be afraid of saying like that. Thank you very much for inviting me, being here in Moscow. Uh, it's my favorite capital here in Moscow. Uh, English language. Uh, thank you for um, the invitation here to Moscow. It's always a pleasure being here and uh, to take part of this um, uh, roundtable. Um, I will um, take some time uh, in the summer to read the book, but uh, as uh, as, as, as soon or as long and, and I read, uh, heard about it, it's a very interesting topic because the topic is about uh, Europe and um, Russia and European Union. And uh, I'm a proud uh, Austrian, I'm a proud European, and um, it doesn't mean that I'm a proud, a proud member of European Union. That's a uh, difference. Europe is more than the European Union. Sometimes I have the impression that uh, European Union is a weapon against Europe, because Europe for me is very important. Europe is uh, like the big uh, motherland for me, uh, 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 like a, a big motherland of um, familiar people and countries uh, which are connected by a long history and a long tradition. And the European Union sometimes I have the impression uh, unfortunately, more often and more often, uh, is about to destroy all these old traditions and this old common history of these uh, familiar uh, people and countries. And uh, I think um, Russia is part of Europe, of course, it is part of Europe. But there are some forces, some special forces, um, some transatlantic forces, who always try to divide this Europe, this traditional Europe, uh, with friend friends, um, uh, with people who are uh, connected um, um, by a long history and long traditions. And this uh, dividing uh, process was um, three years ago, um, like uh, again actualized by the sanctions by the European Union against Russia, which are against any rationalism, actually, because they are bad for the countries of European Union. For example, Germany and Austria, where we lost um, a lot of um, uh, trading um, quantity with Russia. It's also bad for Russia, but Russia can now uh, rethink of their own, of their own uh, cap, uh, capital, capabilities and their own um, structures they have um, in, the, in this big, huge country. And uh, that's why I think um, we have in the uh, European Union, and that's why my party, together with Front National and Lega Nord and other parties in European countries, uh, we try to change this European Union uh, from inside. We are, of course, uh, in favor of a European uh, cooperation. This is very important, but uh, not this way like it's going now. Uh, by the European Union. So we want to change this European, European Union from inside. This is very important uh, for Europe, 
very important for European countries as well as for Russia. And I think <coughs> Russia shows the, the readiness to cooperate um, more deeply with European countries. But uh, unfortunately, Europe European countries like uh, Germany and some other countries, they are, were forced by the United States to make sanctions against Russia. And uh, that shows that the uh, European Union is very weak uh, doesn't have any uh, self, um, um, uh, yeah, doesn't have any force to decide uh, themselves uh, for the future. And that's why our, our parties want to co cooperate to um, overcome the sanctions, to overcome the division of Europe, and uh, to cooperate with Russia and, of course, with any other country in Europe as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Godinus. Right now, uh, I have a great pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Yushinko, so the uh, uh, member of the State Duma of the Russian Federation, the member of the Committee on Information Policy. There is a quite interesting idea when I compare uh, Communist Party and uh, the political spectrum of Russia with European spectrum. The uh, Russian traditional communists, uh, from my point of view, are uh, quite close in their ideology and uh, they respect the sovereignty of our uh, country, the sovereignty of uh, the other countries. They approach close to Eurosceptic nationalistic parties in the European Union uh, to uh, suggest uh, from the title of the party. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Um, uh, so it's uh, not by accident that we came here on the 22nd of June. That is a tragic date because uh, it was uh, the beginning of the Second World War for us. I would uh, like to tell you so that there are about over uh, 200 countries and more than 10 countries uh, uh, which uh, so achieved uh, the cultural achievements uh, and which did not lose the sovereignty. That is Russia and the United Kingdom. Our country uh, uh, had uh, uh, 700 years of uh, liberation wars to liberate our country from all the invaders. I would like to remind you of these facts, uh, so that uh, Russia is the leading country and and uh, Germany, where I was uh, there, and I participated in the conference, uh, and uh, the alternative party in Germany uh, was involved into the organization of this conference. I said that uh, the uh, co friendly relations between Russia and Germany, and uh, so it's very good. And when we have quarrels, it won't lead to anything good out of that. And right now we can see again that after. 25 years of the uh, Berlin Wall uh, collapse, they try to set up new ideological walls. Nobody needs that. And first of all, the European Union uh, doesn't need it. The uh, civic society doesn't need it. Russia doesn't need it. Uh, no one uh, needs that. And But imperialistic forces, unfortunately, so they build up so the European Union in this way. And so they developed the confrontation between the uh, national uh, states of the European Union. The European Union originally had been established as a progressive entity, a consolidation of the, uh, so all the forces and to be quite co uh, competitive uh, on the globe. And so they announced uh, so, the, uh, so this idea from Lisbon to uh, Vladivostok uh, to develop uh, uh, so this uh, potential, this capacity. But the European Union has been digging a new hole uh, instead of uh, so the friendly cooperation. And these countries, uh, uh, as uh, uh, 
Poland, the Baltic uh, republics, which lost their identity and sovereignty. So, and the European Union divides uh, so these countries uh, and uh, uh, for the sake of the imperialistic uh, policy of the United States. Uh, we are against uh, categorically that. So European Union is against that. People don't like it. They vote for uh, the European skeptics. Uh, so called, not so called skeptics, but those Europeans who express their national interests. Uh, many times I uh, had presentations in the State Duma and I underscored that it is necessary to continue our work with the uh, Parliamentska Assembly in the European Union. We have to hold the consultations to work directly with the parties which uh, so, uh, support fairly. So these uh, uh, friendly uh, cooperation, the cooperation with uh, Russia, because it's beneficial uh, to European business. It's uh, beneficial to everyone. Everyone can benefit that. You can close the eyes and can say that Macron has won in uh, France, uh, but we have to understand that uh, over uh, then a half of people uh, so support the uh, uh, self-identity uh, development, and we can see the alternative in Germany, which uh, uh, protects the interests of their own sovereignty as the flagship of the European Union in the conference in Dresden, we talked about uh, so that it so that uh, uh, the division in Europe uh, doesn't have any prospects. So that's why uh, so they will have a decent presentation in Bundestag, and they will have the sort force to influence on the further development of the leading country in the European Union. In conclusion, I would like to tell you, so the sovereignty is great for us. We had protected our sovereignty for 1,000 years of our history. I uh, ha have been uh, in Syria. I met my colleagues from Belgium. And when all of us saw what uh, was going on in Aleppo, in Syria, and in the uh, so, uh, liberated place there. So they changed uh, so their attitudes and they said European values are declared in one way, but what we can see is their uh, actions are quite different. Uh, can, and I would like to address declaratory values, but unfortunately, uh, so, uh, 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 sometimes they are not uh, fulfilled. So thank you very much, uh, Alexander Andreevich. Right now I give the floor uh, to my personal friend uh, and the friend of Russia, German Alvoski. Uh, that is French politician, uh, that is archaeologist, uh, the historian uh, who, spe uh, who uh, studies uh, the Russian expeditionary forces. Uh, you could see uh, Pierre Malinovsky in our news by the central TV news because he won, uh, one of uh, the French uh, citizens who met uh, Mr. Putin in, during his first visit to France after the first presidential elections. Pierre Malinovsky uh, had been involved actively into so the adjustments of uh, the civil society at the political level between our country and his country. We understand that Russia and France uh, don't have anything to divide. And uh, Pierre Malinovsky is uh, close to the National Front of uh, uh, France, and he is close to the uh, uh, Le Pen family. He is very good friend. Uh, and the, to the person Jean Marie Le Pen, who uh, created this party of the National Front, and he's a very good friend of uh, so the established uh, star of the P French policy, uh, Marielle Michel uh, Le Pen. Pierre, you are given the floor. Thank you very much for the invitation and good chance for the traductor because my English is very bad, but uh, I will do my best um, for speaking. Donc for me, we must uh, restore the relation uh, very, quick, very quickly between uh, Europa and Russia because we have a history in common uh, 1,000 years ago. And 
with the sanction is catastrophe for Russia, but it's catastrophe for Europa with agriculture and the different things. You know, I speak sometimes with different people in France, and now with sanction, they are, they, they are in very bad, uh, very bad mood because they cannot send for different uh, products about milk and fruit and different things. You know, and in three years we have betrayed the friendship of Russia for us with sanction with propaganda against Russian politics and uh, with the war in Syria. Now, when you have a problem in the world, all time, it's the fault of Russia, for all. For terrorism, for all, for, sanction, for a war in Ukraine, for all, it's the fault of uh, Russia. My question is, who has created the terrorism? Is Russia? No, of course not. Only for national support Russia in uh, France, yeah. For example, about the Crimea, you know, uh, in Crimea, three years ago, you have a referendum, you know. Russia has never contested a referendum in Europe, never. Who we are for contest a referendum in Russia? And I have speak with different people in Crimea one week ago, and I ask you, what do you think about uh, now, uh, about the situation? They say, we don't speak Ukraine, we are Russian people. Don't. We must respect this decision. And Marine Le Pen, I speak, we will uh, recognize the Crimea because it's just normal. And I don't know if you remember about the politics of uh, Mr. Trump. He promised in the program to recognize the Crimea too. Now we will try all people too. And I think the crisis and the war in Ukraine in Donbass, because I was in this place uh, several times, it's a good opportunity for try to block the Russia and the politics of President Putin. Russia people like France, and we like Russia. And I see um, other representatives. I am very happy to meet other people, uh, representatives representant of uh, different other countries, because they think the same things about me, you know? In France, the politics is not the, don't represent the French people, you know? For example, Mr. Macron now uh, has met President Putin two weeks ago. He promised to develop the relation and uh, maybe speak about sanction, but, but he will change nothing. Only the people from France can change all. Sorry for my English. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 thank you very much, uh, Pierre. Uh, and uh, we can see that our colleague has left us. Uh, Actually, it's quite interesting uh, that I can check the list uh, which uh, uh, I offered to us. Uh, uh, so this is a list of the guests uh, who came not from the Slavic countries, but nevertheless, uh, Pierre Malinowski has a Polish family name. He is a patriot of Ra uh, France uh, and French politician, and that is quite compatible. Uh, Gostantin Gavrilic, uh, who will come back to us, uh, that is Austrian politician, and he is also the representative of the Austrian Party of Freedom, the National Party, Eurosceptic Party, and in this sense, it's quite interesting that the modern European nationalism in, uh, he, in its uh, political forms uh, and in the uh, so, uh, boundaries of the old Europe, uh, looks like international one. Uh, it can be paradox, but it is like that. All these uh, Eurosceptic politicians or pol parties um, so are negative towards the European Union, but uh, there are some uh, tough uh, uh, Eurosceptics as uh, National Front in France uh, who say about the referendum and uh, so the exit uh, from the European Union. There are some soft uh, Eurosceptics, uh, for example, in Hungary, we can see them. Uh, the uh, uh, Fides party, which is ruling party, it's quite uh, Eurosceptic party, and uh, uh, the Prime Minister Auburn is uh, so great. Uh, uh, critic, critic of uh, European Union, but these uh, politicians do not uh, uh, urge uh, to the uh, refusal from the European integration, but they support the more comfortable way of uh, integrating uh, into the European Union. 
and this uh, uh, form of communication uh, can be suggested that this communication uh, could uh, be seen as like that, uh, that uh, so the uh, participants of the European Union uh, must be, uh, so in their national uh, nations, uh, in their states, but uh, they should not move uh, all their serious issues and problems to uh, Belgium to the European Union, uh, and uh, they see the European integration in another way. Alexander Evgenich, I think that we won't wait for our guest. When the guest will come back, he will participate in the discussion. Right now, we will move to the uh, discussion, uh, questions and answers. Uh, so the request is, first of all, uh, present yourself quite clearly, because uh, there is also uh, an interpretation into English, and make uh, a uh, just the questions. Afterwards, there will be comments. Uh, good uh, afternoon. I will present uh, Vladimir Helensky uh, Slavyansky uh, News Kiev. You mentioned Ukraine. And uh, you mentioned uh, Ukraine. I won't comment what is going on in Ukraine. You can see it quite vividly. You know about that. I have a question. From Lisbon and Vladivostok, you talk about the uh, European integration. What we lack is uh, uh, China. Beijing. Uh, so can we say that so? Uh, uh, can we set up a European access here? I'm addressing uh, Jorgen, uh, so my uh, sister is living in Wien. It's uh, pleasant to ask you a question. Don't you think that our Austrian roots uh, and Russian roots are very close? Uh, I uh, came to Austria. I visited Austria. I could see uh, so the uh, songs uh, which are uh, like our good soul songs in Western Ukraine. How do you think one will be uh, relatives with you, with Austrians? And the second question I'm addressing, Mr. Malinowski, you deal with the Russian expeditionary uh, forces. You were in Odessa. What you are going to do in reference with uh, the uh, 100th anniversary? It will be very soon. Thank you. I will start. Uh, thank you for the question. First of all, China shows uh, so the single unique development of the country which ranked uh, so the position of the former Soviet Union. And it is clear, so if uh, Europe uh, has been digging a sort of a hole, but Russia will be uh, developing relations with uh, China, uh, maintaining the silk uh, way, uh, so we will sign the contracts. We are asking Europe, will uh, Europe uh, be able to uh, prolong so this economic uh, um, so union between uh, so uh, Vladivostok and Lisbon and uh, involving Beijing because we take interest into the development of our relations with uh, Beijing with the BRICS countries uh, and uh, uh, the half of the population of uh, uh, the globe uh, can depend on the BRICS development and BRICS countries uh, show certain uh, example. Uh, uh, so we can see an image of uh, so uh, a regional European Union in the shape of the uh, BRICS. Uh, so there will be potential capacity of the silk uh, routes uh, when we cooperate well with the China. Uh, so, but uh, the United States doesn't take interest into these developments. Uh, they have uh, so. Uh, an enormous debt of trillions of dollars. They were trying actually to do everything to refuse from their debt, uh, paying this debt, and they will try to pressure on their competitors. Thank you. Uh, expeditionary corps during the First World War. My father um, is a historian about the First World War. And during the three years, I have dig every weekend, every my holidays for find a Russian soldier. You know, because it's important for a show in Russia. In France, you have a friend. You know, 
and now it's the birthday of the First World War. And we speak about uh, American army, German, English, but we forget about the sacrifice about Russian uh, soldiers in France, you know. And uh, during the battle, Russian army has lost 6,000 Russian soldiers in three days, you know. And now uh, in my village, in Scorsi, we have a um, new monument. Mr. Medinsky is coming two years ago for inauguration, you know. And uh, we want, with this soldier, I, uh, I want to show for Russian and for French people, Russian soldiers, blood Russian soldiers, stay in my uh, in French uh, territory, you know. And uh, now all people in France know this story. And we will continue this summer with the Russian archaeologues and new uh, Russian students. They will come in my village during one month. I organize hall for that for a good uh, expedition during one month for find Russian body and give a good funeral for these uh, people and for show a new time for French people. Don't forget the history between France and Russia, you know. We have the, okay, we have during the Second World War the Normandy Yemen with pilot, you know that. But we forget about the First World War. And after this battle, you know the story. Russian soldiers won't stop because in Russia you have the revolution, Bolshevik revolution. And the soldiers want to come back in, uh, in Russia. The, um, and French army has uh, killed several Russian soldiers in La Courtine during the mutinery, you know. But you imagine after 6,000 Russian soldiers dead, French army kills these people. And I want to explain one thing that is very important because I will give all my archive, personal archive for Russian Minister of Culture. Because during the battle, Russian army has fight against the German army, but French soldiers stay in trench. They are not support Russian army, you know, and we don't speak about that. It's because now I want to restore the history between the French and Russia during the First World War. Sorry for my English, maybe. It's okay for your question? Yes, thank you. Coming back to the question, of course we have common um, roots, we have common values, we are all Europeans and we share the same uh, tradition, history, values and uh, actually we, the, the only thing we are divided by are different languages and some, di some different cultural aspects and maybe some religion different aspects, but we are all Christians, so some Pravoslavni, Katoliki, no, it's a Christi Christianstvo, it's a Europa. Uh, uh, we need to cooperate. In any case, uh, we need to uh, change uh, uh, the European Union because uh, the European Union understands that it is a part of uh, uh, Russia. Uh, so, uh, so we can say that part, uh, so that Russia is a part of Europe, uh, so, but it is a part of Europe and we need to cooperate. Uh, and we have to resort to this uh, cooperation because it is one European family. Thank you very much, uh, huge uh, Issa Issa. I'm uh, the Russian citizen, Syrian origin, independent journalist. Uh, it's a uh, uh, great pity uh, that uh, there aren't uh, so some uh, uh, representatives of Germany out uh, so of uh, so guest lists. Uh, they could see what is going on uh, in Russia since uh, the uh, 4 a.m. So what did their ancestors do when they attacked Russia on the 22nd of June? C can you tell us uh, so why uh, uh, so was this information war uh, held uh, against uh, Russia and against Syria? Because I am of Syrian origin. Uh, yes, I regularly attend Syria and I could see with my own eyes who is fighting against uh, terrorism and who is playing uh, with uh, terrorism, who is creating, who is building the peace. Uh, Russia is doing that, and I can see who is uh, destroying all that. And Russia contributes to the fight against terrorism to assist the Syrian nation. And Russia assists not only the Syrian nation, but all the nations of the world. In the previous century, Russia 
certainly fought against fascism and this uh, century Russia has been fighting against uh, terrorism uh, uh, EGIL. Uh, I visited Syria I could see that I'm ready to invite you to Syria and to, to go as a Syrian uh, a regional a Syrian uh, citizen uh, and I will show you what is going on there why is it like that uh, all of us uh, uh, so we can see that all the media from the Western Europe dictates uh, uh, so they uh, uh, use uh, propaganda from the United States of America they dictate the world uh, so this international gendarmes uh, uh, of the European Union so we understood your question okay dear friends um, our guests will answer your question but I would like to address uh, so the issue. The topic is Russia and Europe's uh, cooperation instead of confrontation. And we are discussing the way uh, we can find the solutions uh, right now. So our guests uh, present the constructive, the friendly ways. Uh, uh, so uh, they uh, support the cooperation. Uh, so that's why. So your question about Syria isn't quite correct because they are not responsible for uh, this uh, issue. Let's uh, transform our discussion into another trend. Uh, I would like to uh, answer this question so I would like to add uh, so uh, you're quite modest because uh, you could see mr. Assad uh, two years ago Alexander Andreevich um, I will add uh, ye, uh, some uh, comments uh, in the introduction I said that I met a Belgium deputy after that we had also the visit to Syria with a deputy of the European Union and uh, our deputy delegation was in Syria. Uh, so and uh, so we could uh, see so the way we work directly with the deputies with the political elite of Europe it's a more constructive way of our, our cooperation uh, it's more constructive than to overcome the wall from the European Union when people visit these places they can see everything with their eyes and then they uh, uh, raise the awareness of uh, people in uh, parliaments uh, in the societies. Uh, I met the Belgium deputy. So Belgium is the capital of the European Union. It was a representative delegation. They were in our base, uh, they could see the way our militaries worked. They saw um, Bashar Assad, they saw Aleppo, uh, Damascus. They could see everything with their eyes, uh, the way it happens. Uh, so this kind of work is quite substantial and uh, this uh, kind of uh, the work is very important. Uh, so who is behind that? We know quite well who is behind all this uh, propaganda. So what is the medium structure of the whole world and uh, who uh, do they report to? Uh, so it's stupid to talk about that. It's an equal uh, standoff in the world. Uh, uh, Russia today, which is very active, it has been now uh, broadcasting quite actively in Europe and in the world and the, uh, this the broadcaster has been pressurized quite seriously. So that is one soldier which uh, tries to fight, and all media belong uh, to banks, uh, to specific uh, financial structures, oligarchs. Uh, so what should we discuss here? Uh, Chris Robes, uh, I have a question. Uh, I, I, I uh, live in Brussels. I was in uh, Parliament. I'm a Flem Flemish. I can see that Europe has changed uh, a lot of things. Uh, so many people come from Africa to Europe. Uh, 
uh, so uh, in future Europe uh, will be a sort of a sort of caliphate. Your uh, uh, party knows about that. If uh, Europe will uh, change uh, uh, so its uh, image, uh, so Russians uh, will be quite interesting for you to cooperate. Uh, so, and I'm asking Europeans, uh, how can uh, the, uh, stop? Who is now running in whole Europe, and how we can stop the decline of Europe? Yes. If you can answer. Это очень важный вопрос, конечно, вопрос. Do politics? How can we stop the decline of European uh, values and European? Uh, tradition and how can we uh, um, like stop the propaganda against Russia and this is an information war uh, as we just uh, heard is it an information war against Russia um, because the economical cooperation between the heart of Europe or, or Europe uh, as it is and Russia or the European Union and Russia would be one of the most powerful corporations worldwide that's, that, that, that's what uh, transatlantic uh, powers know. And that's why they try to div divide, 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 and first of all by information war, uh, in order to uh, brainwash the European people. That Russia is always bad, Russia is uh, um, doing that, Russia is, uh, like, uh, is doing bad things in Syria, Russia is, is doing bad things with Crimea. I mean, they had a referendum. Uh, like uh, in Kosovo, there was no referendum, but well, it's double standard. You know, it's, in, it's, it's information war. So this, this is in order to, to put into the, the, the heads of European people that Russia is bad, that in, that in the future a cooperation between Russia uh, will not be possible in, in order that uh, the, uh, one of the most powerful economical and cultural corporations won't, be, uh, won't have any chance. That's good for whom? It's good for transatlantic powers, of course, and that's why all this is happening. I would like to add uh, regarding the information of war, and uh, uh, so uh, and uh, uh, so they have disadvantages because they are limited by the truth. Those who cheat uh, produce lie, so they uh, uh, don't have so the limitations, uh, and that is the Goebbels policy, uh, which was uh, recognized by uh, so the customers of all these information uh, war so any lie in a uh, beauty shape uh, so will be uh, destroyed I would divide uh, Europe into traditional Europe so to those countries which have the hint on their own sovereignty so they are economically developed countries in Europe and those countries which are buffer countries so they don't have any kind of the sovereignty and they fulfill all the wishes which are imposed by uh, someone. So there is a shameful initiative in the same of Poland, and they initiated a decommunization uh, wave because they tried to fight against the communists uh, uh, from their nation, and they got killed uh, in uh, the fascist uh, war. So they renamed the streets uh, of the defenders of. Uh, Poland, uh, of Stalingrad, and I think that uh, 600,000 of uh, Soviet soldiers uh, got killed, perished, uh, who really uh, released uh, the countries of Europe and the powers of Poland want to uh, make people forget about this memory and common Polish people, so they maintain the cemeteries, the burial places, um, uh, so spending their own money on that, and this wave of anti-Semitism, uh, Russophobia, so is underway. So that is anti-Semitism also when they try to cross uh, the memory and uh, they try to draw uh, so their own uh, image, uh, their cliches about Superman. Uh, and all kinds of the Hollywood uh, scenarios, unfortunately. Uh, so the 1,000 history of Europe uh, could uh, reject this kind of the imposed values. Thank you.
We have the record of uh, the deputy, 570 deputy, but we, they decide, I think, 20% of, um, of uh, the loi, the, I don't know the word in English, the uh, lois. Guillaume, the lois in English? The laws. The laws? Okay, only 20%. Now, European Union, it's a small cast of people, they decide all for French, for uh, Austria, for all you know, and Every day in the European Parliament, you have a forum of uh, other things, who, conference against Russia. Why? It's my question. Why? And I have not the answer, you know. I know you have uh, five, maybe six countries in Europa, they, ha they hate Russia, we can say. For example, you have uh, Poland. Because, you know, my origin is Poland. I have a family in this country, and now they call me the son of Putin. And when I speak with them, why you hate Russia? And they cannot give me answer, you know? They speak about the Second World War, but the Second World War is 70 years ago, now it's finished, you know? When I have met the President Putin or the other minister here all the time, they ask me, you are Polish man? Yes, and it's not a problem. Look, we can uh, work together, and me, I recognize I have an uh, origin of Poland, but I love Russia because I know what Russia is doing for my country, and what uh, I, uh, what we, we, with this sanction, with all the problems in the world, we will never stop to be friends, you know? I am sure, because, for example, for the election of president, Marine Le Pen has 11 million of people as voted for Marine Le Pen, you know? And during this uh, campaign of uh, presidential, she's coming in Russia for meet the president Putin, you know? And all these 11 people know Marine Le Pen support uh, Russia. Donc, 11 million of French like Russia. We start very good, you know? But uh, I am sure uh, electors of uh, different other parties from Mélenchon and other, uh, other parties support Russian too. Donc, for me, France and Russia, one day, I don't know when, they will, we will restore the relation Maybe with history, with cultural, cu cultural project, or I don't know. Because uh, for me, the culture has not border, you know. It's because now I do my best for organize uh, cultural project and historical project. Politic, all time the politic is a problem for a small people uh, in the head of a country. Thank you. I would like to add so, uh, Ed, uh, uh, um, on the Russian uh, part, uh, so how is it interesting or not interesting uh, to have uh, uh, Europe as uh, a European Union? So visiting uh, the uh, countries of Europe, we would like to see so European identity of these European countries, cultural identity of these countries. We are talking a lot about the change of uh, climates and there are left forces uh, uh, so who um, put uh, the uh, questions on the agenda. But it's quite interesting to see similarities. You see those who are concerned uh, with the change of climate. Uh, we want to stop uh, this change of climate because we want to preserve our soil the, the way uh, we remember. We want to preserve the identity of the soil and the same people for example, when uh, uh, they t talk about migration, it's quite uh, natural. Uh, some people die, die out, some people uh, occupy their places. Uh, it's normal, you will get used to that. Uh, so that is uh, the question uh, of uh, 100, uh, 1000 years, that the temperature will uh, rise uh, by one degree or two degrees. It's critical for them, but the population of Europe will be changed uh, by these years. Uh, it's not critical for them. It's not politically correct to discuss these issues. From my point of view, it's great interest of Russians uh, and uh, European nations uh, to preserve uh, their own identity, national identity, respecting their traditions, uh, their uh, rituals, uh, cultures, but it's evident uh, to understand better others, uh, those who differ from you culturally, uh, if you understand yourself, who 
uh, are you, that you are representative of your religion, your ethnic group, and uh, your culture, so, but you are not just the citizen of the world. It's very difficult to understand all these identity issues. We can't hear. Thank you. Uh, so the chairman of the Migration Security and uh, the Minister of Defense, uh, I deal with the problems of uh, uh, so all the measures uh, uh, to count measures of the uh, migration and uh, develop the mechanism. Mm -hmm. And I uh, so I deal with counts uh, acts uh, on the immigration issues. I'm addressing European uh, guests. Alexander told about that. The Russian Federation has a food luxury, so the sovereignty. The reality is Europe is uh, under the choice to preserve Schengen or to go back to the European interest to Europe. European roots, uh, borders, uh, to their European national uh, self-preservation. Because our president told us that the reality is Europe would uh, lose uh, the national identity. I would be great if our European guests would uh, comment this political situation and they would express uh, their opinion on the migration situation. Um, which is uh, developing right now in, in Europe, uh, and uh, what uh, kind of scenarios of development you can see for the migration security, how can you act uh, in these issues? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, of course, this is the biggest threat of uh, European countries, of countries of the European Union. It's a difference. It's mass migration, mass immigration, and Islamization, radical Islamization. Uh, for example, in Vienna, uh, we have um, several hundred uh, radical Islamic kindergarten groups. Um, this is something we, uh, we 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 know now and try to uh, try to 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 end this, to, to, to give them money and to, to stop it and to close them, which is very important, because we don't want to radicalize our children um, anymore. And uh, we already know that Vienna, and of course I love Vienna, and I'm, it's a very beautiful city, but still Vienna has become one of the radical Muslim centers of Europe. And this is because of the, the wrong political um, actions for the, the last um, 20, 30 years. Um, this is because we... Uh, we had in Austria and, and in European Union countries a mass migration, uh, especially from countries, um, uh, from Islamic countries. This is uh, because um, we um, let enter people from, for example, in Austria, from Turkey. In Turkey, they had to live without uh, radical Islamism till like, like five, five years ago. Now it's getting uh, different by Erdogan, but in, in Vienna they could live their radical Islamism. And now this is my party who wants to stop all these uh, tendencies, and we have to make a big effort together with our partners in Europe, with, with France, with, uh, with Germany, with uh, Italy, with uh, Belgium, with Holland, and uh, all our friends, uh, to uh, make a pol politics, for example, like Orban. This is the only one who made, uh, made rational politics inside European Union, and that this uh, shows that it's possible even inside European Union, uh, inside the European Union framework of law, yeah, to make a politics and to close the borders and to not let in uh, Islamism and so on. And this is a good example. And if we come to those to, to this um, um, uh, politics, so we, we have to win the next elections, of course. <laughs> this is a big challenge. Uh, so we have all to win the, the, uh, these, these elections. We um, <laughs> hope. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope so. Uh, so in the, in the middle of October, we have the next elections. But we also have to see that um, um, about 20 percent, or in Vienna even more, of the electorship are former foreigners and came from other countries. So if, if, if these foreigners uh, come from European countries, 
it's okay because they, they think almost the same as we think. But if the foreigners come from Islamic countries, it's a bit different. So we have, we have officially in Vienna or in Austria now 7% uh, Islamic people, but they're getting more and more because um, um, since 2015, where it was the big uh, mi migration um, input uh, when it started, uh, about 200,000 people came since two years more from Islamic countries. Uh, they can take the families and they get more children than Austrians have. So the Islamization of um, big cities like Paris, London, they have, they have even an uh, Islamic uh, governor or, or mayor. Uh, it's going on and it's going forward and we have to stop this. This, this is one of the biggest challenges and biggest, uh, biggest um, uh, topics of uh, our politics. But uh, we must not forget now, you know, in uh, France you have a terrorist attack every month. Now it's uh, normal. But uh, more of these terrorists is French people, you know, they have the nationality of French. So what, what we must doing, you know, with these people? Because they have born in France, they have a family in France, they have a job in France, and after one day they can uh, kill people with car. What, we, what do you want to do against one man? He take a car and one morning he take a bus and he won't destroy people. Now he's inside my country, you know, they have a power. You have seen the election of legislative for deputy. You have seen how much, how many, how many, how, many, how much deputy is a Muslim a deputy? is a record this year. I think it's 11 or 12, you know? Before it was one or two. This time it's 11, 12. How much the next time, you know? They start to take the power and they do the best for these people, never. I have seen one um, English deputy two days ago, I have seen in the internet, uh, after the attack of the mosque, you know, in England. They say it's a racist attack, terrorist. But for the attack of uh, Muslim men uh, three weeks ago, she just writes his tragedy. She don't write his Muslim attack against the uh, right people, you know. But it's, it's a politic. You can close the border in Europa, but now it's inside. In France, we have 12, 13 million of uh, Muslim men, you know. So uh, I am a positive man, but now it's real. the future is very difficult for my country, very difficult. Can I add one more word here? So, and this uh, playing uh, so with the nationalities, uh, with uh, multiculturalism of uh, Europe, with uh, Muslims. Uh, so, this policy, not serious policy, uh, led us uh, to so these problems. Uh, so, is it necessary to keep the Schengen zone? Uh, I think that uh, economic uh, consolidation of Europe, unification, so uh, very good uh, so, uh, transportation in Europe. Uh, so we could find very positive trends here. In 90s, we had the collapse of the Soviet Union. When we visited the European Union, European countries in the 90s, nobody checked us uh, on the borders because when we went to Ukraine, we were examined on the border between Russia and Ukraine, so and we have relatives there, but this Schengen zone gives a very good opportunity to um, travel, and we have to develop that. And those who uh, want to de destroy this economic component, uh, we have to sort out the problems. Uh, so the European countries are under the choice right now how to uh, set uh, some kinds of the frameworks. Uh, uh, the migration policy, uh, which is quite active uh, in uh, the policy of European countries, uh, national um, policies, uh, will the European Union actually sort out these problems with migration? Everything will depend on that. Ivan Alexandrovich, uh, Soviet president of the newspaper, uh, the advisor to president, uh, the uh, Witsi nation has uh, chosen the idea. What is better? Uh, so Italian proverb, uh, nobody in the paradise wants to be alone. Indian proverb, uh, one hand isn't enough to, uh, to, to clap. It's bad uh, to uh, 
have uh, uh, not to have a brother, so you'd better have to breast. Uh, one uh, finger is easy to break, but when there are even two fingers, it's a fist. Uh, and uh, so your book, which you present here, finalizes with the phrase, uh, all of us are in good luck that we have been uh, living in the epoch of changes. What kind of the common goal can be for us, for all uh, the countries? Thank you very much for your question, for your proverbs, for the quotes. So these proverbs actually uh, resemble uh, each uh, other. So, uh, as far as concerns of the common goal, it's a philosophical question. It's quite a global question. I don't know what kind of the uh, common which, uh, goal. Friedrich Nietzsche wrote, if the nation uh, starts uh, uh, mixing up the goal with uh, the goals of another nation, so this nation will disappear. I don't remember exactly this uh, quote, but uh, it is something like that. When we talk talk about Russia and Europe and uh, Russia and uh, the West, I think that uh, we share our minimum uh, goals, uh, that is uh, to keep our uh, cultural, political, military and uh, ethnical uh, identity. We have to preserve ourselves the way we are. And probably, uh, so we used to be like that, and we want uh, to go back to self-respect, uh, mutual respect, the respect uh, of ourselves, our culture, our traditions, uh, our identity, so you know that our philosophers, excellent philosophers of the 19th century, Russian philosophers told us uh, about the blooming uh, complexity. So uh, they uh, talked about the perfect ideal state uh, for the nation. On the uh, one hand, uh, the nation is uh, consolidated on the other hand, in this entity, everyone uh, can uh, ex be exposed to the creativeness, to the cultural identity. I will answer philosophically. We don't need to lose the feeling uh, and the desire to create, to create our own future and comparing our uh, so works and creations with our neighbor's creations. Another question, please. Uh, this uh, Council of Federation International Relations, I'm addressing the uh, foreign uh, friends, uh, Jochen. Uh, the, uh, so, Alexander is political analyst, uh, and the question is like that. You know that uh, there are many uh, aggregated uh, information data presentations uh, and we can call them so quite friendly relations of some representatives of the West uh, towards Russia. I have a more profound question. Uh, Jochen is one of the leaders uh, of uh, Wien. Uh, I like uh, their city very much. Uh, there is such a point. Uh, so there is a standoff uh, confrontation between uh, uh, the West uh, uh, and uh, we can uh, call it as the fight of the elites. Uh, I can feel so this kind of uh, the confrontation when I visit uh, the uh, so uh, the countries in Europe. Uh, everything is okay from your point of view. If we try to uh, range uh, one, two, three groups, uh, social uh, members uh, who are closer to Russia, regardless of the propaganda in Europe. I know some numbers. I would like to uh, ask about the numbers of people who uh, treat our country, Russia, in a friendly way. Uh, 
No, not not elite people, the groups of people, social layers of their society. There are some social groups of people. There is elite which uh, rules the mass of people. There are social professional age groups. Uh, let's suggest professional groups. Uh, which professional groups are closer uh, to Russia? For example, they uh, have the emotional state closer to Russia, so they work more with Russia, and they depend less on their uh, imp uh, propaganda imposition of these propagandistic measures uh, in media. Can you sh they want to, to make business and uh, uh, for mutual interest, and now, uh, now uh, because of sanctions, um, some of them uh, can't anymore or lost a lot of business. So I'm sure that the, the majority of businessmen is in favor of uh, cooperation with Russia. And um, um, uh, you talked about elites. Um, the elites are influenced by this transatlantical, um, like, uh, like powers to make sanctions, to the politicians and so on, media, uh, information and war. But I think the majority of the people, of the, of the people, no, no matter who it is, businessmen or uh, like working class, is, is in favor with, uh, with Russian people. They, they think they're friends. They don't have anything against Russia. There's, there's sometimes they think uh, all, all this information war is like uh, it's a virtual war, and they can't understand this because um, the people, the majority of the people, know that uh, Russian, uh, the Russian people, is uh, are friends. So they don't uh, understand this informational war. So that, uh, this is a war by, by the elites, also against the meaning of their own people. But people want to stop the sanction because I have speak uh, one hour uh, ago about that. You know, when I go in campaign, I speak with uh, agriculture, uh, different people, and now they're dead. You know, it's catastrophe for French. But after, when you have election, presidential election for change that, they continue to vote for bad people, for new presidents against Russia. So uh, for me, uh, we, I cannot change no, uh, um, myself, you understand? Bon, now you have 11 million of people I start to think, ah, I think it's a good idea if we restore the relation with Russia and stop the sanction, you know. But now French is for uh, the next five years, we will continue the same way. Don't for me, the sanction will not stop uh, tomorrow. You, you know that, of course. And, uh, and for example, for the Crimea, I have read uh, one week ago what the list of sanctions with the European Union, you know. If you go in Crimea for invest, for different things, you can uh, go in tribunal. I, uh, you, you understand what I want to explain. You have a big problem after, you know? Don't, if you want to build, for example, a hospital for people, you know, it's not politic because it's for people in place. Ah, no, 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 you cannot. You must find a solution for control the sanction, you know? And for me, I was shocked one week ago in Crimea because you have not telephone, you have not bank, Mastercard, nothing, all is blocked, you know? It's, we want to isolate, I don't know the word, uh, Crimea dead uh, inside, you know? And, uh, it, and after this referendum, only Marine Le Pen in France supports that because it's normal, I repeat, but never Russian uh, people has a contest or referendum in Europa, you know? It's not the problem of Russian, never. Putin say, oh, it's bad, we will give a sanction against your country because you want a referendum, no? And you cannot, in, uh, for Crimea, I think the referendum, 90% of people, 95% people, percent, percent of people want to come back in Russia because it's Russian territory, you know? It just, you know, the story with Khrushchev gives uh, the, the Crimea, but these people is Russophone people. And you cannot contest 99, 95% uh, of people, you cannot because uh, you can sometimes traffic for five, ten percent but not this, uh, this number, you know? And only Marine Le Pen won't change that. Now France has, a ch uh, has a choose a new president, it's uh, for five years, it's the same thing. Sorry. Are there any people who wanted to ask a question? Nikola Berdor, uh, so the edition media agency. So I'm addressing everyone uh, of this roundtable uh, event. Uh, what 
uh, so what is uh, the role of the Baltic countries when they instigate uh, so the uh, war uh, between Russia and the European countries? So what is the purpose which they pursued uh, so that they destroy, you know, so this kind of uh, the relationship? So they uh, uh, create uh, the economic problems, political problems. What is the purpose of uh, the Baltic countries here? the friendship between France and Russia, correct? No. So the question is different. No, 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 no. The question is different. What is what is the role of the Baltic countries, uh, of the Baltic states, uh, in what way? So do, uh, why do they enlarge the conflict between the West, the European countries, and Russia? Uh, why uh, do the Baltic countries play this role? Why do they hate uh, uh, Russians? Russia. So, is this for, for, above all, it's the NATO who, who searches for reason to exist since uh, 91. So, the NATO shouldn't exist since 91. The Warsaw Pact uh, ended, so the NATO should also have ended. And the NATO always uh, seeks a reason to, uh, uh, to explain itself uh, and the reason to exist. And so, they... they, they um, they make fear above all in the Baltic states, Poland, Ukraine against Russia. The Russians could invade soon, of course, they're already preparing for invasion, only in order to, um, to increase the budget uh, and, the, and the powers and the, the troops of, of NATO. So this is a, this is a reason of self-explanation um, of, uh, of the existence of NATO. And, that, and that this is one of the, ma the, the major reasons, actually. And the problem is not a country by country, you know. The problem is the European Union, you know. It's a group of gangsters, you know. You know these people, these people, the chief of the European Union. Sorry, but for me, it's gangster because they work directly with the USA and the order comes from the USA. And after, Europe gives order for different countries, you know. We are now French, can, I have explained one, one hour ago, we can, we vote nothing, you know, in a French Assembly Nationale, it's only 20% of the decision for France, you know, it's European Union. And in European Union, you have very, very bad people, sorry, but it's the truth, and more different countries, don't like Russia, I repeat, but uh, it's, it's true, you know, Baltic uh, country, uh, Poland, but well, Ukraine is not uh, inside the European Union, but we are very close of this country, you know, you have seen with Mr. Uh, Trump and uh, Poroshenko two days ago, what they speak about, uh, about Russia, or it's normal, and uh, it's, I cannot explain more about that, but French is, no, we, now we are nothing in the world, all time we want to speak, uh, yes, for destroy we are doing with catastrophe politics with Sarkozy in Libya, you know, Donc, uh, we have, for that we are very, very good, but we follow the decision of European Union, now, we, we can do nothing alone without the European Union. It's because we want to, uh, my par fin, the party of Front National won't leave this European Union. Because if we leave the European Union, we can speak face to face with Russia, you know? And President Putin and Russia know that. France cannot take a decision alone. For example, if uh, people want in, in France want to recognize the Crimea, if Europe, with the European Union, it's impossible. After you have a sanction for your country, to you, you know, it's because now we will see with Engli uh, England, you know, with the Brexit. Because now, after two years, they they will finish uh, all the relation with Europe. But England can uh, come back uh, alone with autarcy, you know. But they will follow the politics of American, and will, they will st uh, stay uh, close of European Union. Yes. I think you understand me. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will add briefly. If uh, the human being is broken, if it 
is uh, uh, so the person who can be destroyed uh, so the will can be destroyed so the, uh, you can do everything with this kind of the man and the same happens with the countries which forget the history the roots uh, the history I mean the Baltic countries uh, the current uh, um, uh, the, the current government of Ukraine I don't mean uh, the nation itself so everything happens like that with uh, these countries they are frontliners in the provocation against uh, uh, Russia and everything is initiated by the United States it's natural that these institutes as uh, the Nobel Prize uh, of the uh, peace uh, became uh, you know so quite uh, 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 so uh, dependent on uh, uh, so the market needs, let us say. So and the person who sticks to the fascism, so can be rewarded by the Nobel Prize for Peace. Uh, if we uh, you, used uh, to be um, so in different way, you remember so Clinton. Uh, uh, petted Yeltsin on the shoulder. And uh, uh, Yeltsin said uh, the NATO could extend uh, their borders everywhere, everywhere you could go. So we were a very good country in this case, in the eyes of the worst. Uh, but the situation has changed uh, with uh, uh, the current president, Mr. Putin. And American, uh, America is regardless of uh, so the rulers uh, will pursue so their imperialistic politics and America will use the countries which have lost their sovereignty and they absolutely these countries absolutely depend on America and these countries will be fed by the Americans that's why there are the drills the trainings exercises of NATO are done on the, the uh, soil of the Baltic countries and because of the Russian threats and you can see so the that they are used by those who really want to be used. I would like to make a comment in a, a nutshell. So if uh, you look at the situation specifically with the Baltic countries, with the same uh, Poland, um, all over again, we can see that we deal with the bankruptcy countries. Uh, bankrupts. Uh, to a less extent, it concerns uh, Estonia, but if we talk about Lithuania, it's a failed state. Uh, uh, for the history of its independence, the government of uh, Lithuania uh, has uh, destroyed the economy, so the annual population has been reducing uh, its amounts uh, uh, so dramatically. Nobody from the North Africa uh, doesn't want to come to Lithuania because uh, people prefer to live in uh, favorable conditions. And what is left out in Lithuania? They want to sell, uh, so Russophobia. They try to prevent Russia from uh, so integration and cooperation with Europe. And uh, they receive the dotations from Europe and uh, America. Russophobia has been transformed into business for Latvia and Lithuania. The elites do not say any other techniques. They can't create anything. And uh, being our neighbors, uh, they can influence on some uh, European processes. Uh, to some extent, and they try to be uh, obstacles uh, on the way of uh, our mutual cooperation, business relations between Russia and Europe. They get some uh, uh, coins uh, for their existence. It's a big uh, problem because the countries which do not neither political nor uh, so economic uh, 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 so policy infrastructure, but they can vote. They they can uh, sort out some problems. So that is a sort of a trap which Brussels and uh, so the United States uh, put the whole Europe because Europeans can't do anything because they depend on the consensus. Is it right? 
And I think that is uh, the main headache. Uh, so connected with these uh, uh, governments, uh, so these uh, states can exist for many years, even uh, with a minority of people or four, three people with the governments. So in any case, uh, they would uh, put uh, veto and they would stop our cooperation with Lisbon and Europe. Uh, there is a very small. Um, uh, comments uh, in the post-Soviet Russia, our perception of the uh, Baltic countries had been distorted. People who are older know that the Baltic countries were called as our Europe. Uh, it used to be uh, a sort of a showcase uh, uh, funded by the Soviet Center and people from the other parts of the Soviet Union went to the Baltic countries uh, and checked uh, so the beauty of Europe. Oh, Europe is so beautiful uh, looking at the, uh, these countries. And they subscribed uh, all this beauty to the uh, uh, so some peculiar features of uh, Baltic nations, but we sponsored uh, this type of uh, the Baltic countries. When everything has finished, uh, so for this old uh, Europe, uh, uh, so uh, they uh, did not consider the Baltic countries as uh, uh, European countries. Uh, uh, it was more Russia for them and not from the best side. We have to pay attention to this point. Uh, why, do, uh, why don't they like us? Why are they afraid uh, uh, that we would attack them? Why we are going to attack these uh, minor, small countries, but we are a huge country? And they don't have any military uh, military support. Even in the fever conditions, we never think about attacking these countries. But we think from the position of the huge country with uh, millions of citizens. But we do not understand what does it mean to live in a small country with two million people uh, for the longest period of the time, for the recent centuries. Uh, so it had been a battlefield for huge countries and it's difficult for us to understand how can you live in a beautiful uh, towns uh, with beautiful churches uh, which uh, had been built by other people you know that uh, before the revolution the most uh, Baltic towns uh, uh, were made up by Polish people, Jews, uh, and uh, their locals lived in rural areas. And of course, Russians uh, used to live uh, before the revolution. After the revolution, the local people moved from rural areas to towns, uh, and uh, they expelled uh, Jews, Germans, uh, Polish people, Russians. Uh, and uh, for these countries, it is necessary uh, to have a national myth. And in this particular context, uh, they have a national myth. And these elites, uh, they have chosen so these nationalistic myths. Uh, they uh, so were under the wing of uh, the Germans. Uh, they were afraid of uh, Germans. And it was very complicated history of the territories. Uh, so and propaganda boils down to so the propaganda against uh, uh, Russians. Uh, uh, so, um, we have only 15 uh, minutes. If there are some uh, short, uh, brief uh, uh, questions, ask, please. Uh, dear guest, how do you think if, uh, if we organize a referendum in the European Union, uh, who will be for the sanctions and against sanctions? So what will be the results of this uh, referendum? Who will be in favor of sanctions, against sanctions? Uh, of против санкций. 68 will be against sanctions, uh, and over 70 will be for, for sanctions. Uh, it's very short. Uh, once, uh, uh, one more. Mike, Mike, please. 
Thank you. Right now, uh, so the first visit of Vladimir Putin to France has uh, been finalized. Mr. Putin has visited France, met your president. I wanted to ask Pierre, uh, what are your focus uh, for the developments uh, in our cooperation between Russia and Europe? Uh, and uh, we had a proposal from uh, your French president to create it's the bilateral uh, working groups uh, about uh, the uh, working groups on migration issues. Uh, president Putin is coming only for one day and uh, for meet uh, the new president. Donc, uh, the, you know the topic of President Macron and President Putin because all television uh, was here. But for me, I was in the in the list for the meeting because uh, Mr. Peskov has organized this, uh, this meeting between me and the President Putin. But it's about cultural project. You know, it's, we have uh, not speak about uh, politic project only culture because I have explained for me the culture has not border. You know, and for restore the relation between the culture, the history we can uh, give a new hope for French people and Russian people. And uh, I have uh, shown him uh, my, my work uh, for Russia about the soldier and other projects. And uh, when I have speak about the project of summer with uh, 10 Russian students and archaeologues, you know, for the expedition in my country for find a new Russian soldier, he, he, he has a very big smile and he has finished by uh, merci beaucoup in French, you know. And for me, it's a big honor to meet your president in my country, but he speaks for me in French. It's too old, but it's very, very great. And uh, we have a speak about other things, but uh, all is about culture and not politics, you know. And uh, for this uh, summer, it's good because if we find our other Russian soldier, it's very great, but we will find uh, maybe French soldier too, you know. And the soldier is dead together. Uh, 100 years ago, you know, it's not very far uh, 100 years ago and all time we will stay together and now I don't understand why uh, NATO and European Union send the uh, soldier in the border of Russia for provocation you have seen in um, in uh, Balt, uh, Pays Balt, you know, in uh, Estonia, you have seen that, you know, now French soldier train as a training, you know, we have sent tank, you know, because I was a soldier during eight years in my country, you know, and I have two friends, they are pilot of uh, tank, Leclerc tank, and now they are in uh, other country in the border of Russia for training, you know, but it's pure provocation, you understand? And my friend like Russia, but his soldier, he must uh, accept the order to go in this country. And in French, when I was soldier, all time we have a training in a camp in French. All time it's against Russian. You know, the enemy is Russian. Now it's not Islamic people or other. All time is T-34, uh, you know, the tank, uh, T-55. Uh, now, in this moment, when I was soldier, the enemy is Russian. And I remember you have Russian tank you know, with a flag of communists, you know, but we are in the, in the 2070 years, you imagine that? We will, it's very, very difficult for change that, for change the mentality of the chief of uh, politics, you know, because they don't want a cooperation with Russia, you know. They like NATO, they like European Union, they like USA. And for example, all, all, uh, last things, you know, about Ukraine, you know, it's very, very specific uh, condition here, you know, because you have a more fascist, the new fascist for me is in Ukraine. You know, I have seen these people because I was in this country. I was in Lvov, uh, Lviv, I don't know how you say. Now I cannot go in, huh? you imagine, because now I go in Donbass. But these people like Nazi, I have seen that, ex-Nazi uh, uh, soldier, you know. And in France, we support this, uh, this country and this uh, party. For example, you have the, um, I don't know, remember the Azov, Bataillon Azov. And in France, you have, for example, one philosopher, the name is Bernard Henri Lévy. You know, it's Jude man, he's very bad man, huh? but he's a Jude man and he fight against fascism all his life. It's normal. But he supports this country. You imagine? We have a big problem for that, you know? Because for the Second World War, who people has won the war? It's not USA, it's not French. France, you know, it's not them. It's only Russia. We have a joke in France for the Second World War, you know? It's American, it's Russia, it's France, you know, because during First World War, we have good fight. But for the Second World War, it's catastrophe. After three weeks, we have lost the war. If Russian 
as not win after 20 million of people is dead. It's finished now. German has win and it's fascism everywhere, you know. But we forget that now. We organize a, for, the, for the First World War the same. Now it's the birthday. We give invitation for USA. USA is coming in the end of the war, you know, not during the war. Russia has fight all time, all the war, the first, the second, and now they want cooperation with France, but we want, we send a soldier in the border of Russia. The problem, Russian people is not aggressive. During the last 20 years, Russian, for, uh, Russian army for intervention, intervention in the world, only one in Syria. France is 200 intervention, you know? I was in Afghanistan, in, Li in uh, Lebanon during one year. I am going everywhere for America, sorry. But Russian has never provoked people. After the war in Afghanistan, they are staying in country, you know? And the war in Syria is not because Russia wants to go in this country. It's for protect about terrorism, you know? Because after the destruction in Libya with Sarkozy, more attack terrorists start in my country, you know? And Russia protect Europe, but I don't know this logic in Europe. I cannot explain that, you know. Спасибо большое. Ну, thank you very much. Uh, so there will be the final words said uh, by Alexei Yanukovych Kochetkov, uh, so the uh, leader of the funds, uh, the people's uh, diplomacy. So uh, due to this fund, uh, so the uh, uh, managed to give me the opportunity to publish my book. We could see quite interesting uh, opinions uh, of our friends, guests uh, from Austria and France. It was very interesting for me to listen to their views. Uh, also, I am familiar with the positions of the uh, Party of Freedom and the National Front uh, Party. It's quite useful to listen to their positions from the first uh, hands uh, uh, from our friends whom we still have in Europe. It's not key Kremlin uh, propaganda. It's not uh, live news. It's uh, so uh, so th those representatives, live people who came from Europe and uh, talked about their uh, views. I would like to make it in uh, uh, regular practice. I am uh, inviting uh, all our friends, guests uh, to our events. Uh, we are ready to uh, organize uh, so this kind of work, uh, debates uh, in European Union to, along with uh, the Communist Party. So we invite the uh, Communist Party to make presentations uh, to preserve the national interest of Russia. Uh, the representatives of the Communist Party uh, are very active to uh, defend the Christian uh, values. Uh, and uh, the head of this work is Sergei Anatolyevich Gavrilov, our big friend. Uh, and uh, along with him, we visited Syria many times. And I think that uh, so this dialogue uh, and mutual understanding will lead us to to this fact that the second, the 22nd of June will be the day of uh, uh, so morning, but it will be never repeated by uh, our enemies. Thank you very much. And uh, we, uh, we are looking forward to our next uh, meeting.